Joining me now, Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson. He's the author of Holding the Line, A Lifetime of Defending Democracy and American Values. Congressman, Happy New Year. Great to have you. The FBI already established the president here, Congressman. When allegations surfaced that classified documents were being held, the FBI raided and they, and they shamed. But it turns out those standards only apply to Republican presidents. This weekend, additional classified documents were discovered in Biden's Delaware home, and there's yet to be any raid, Congressman. Isn't this proof positive that the FBI is a Democrat organization and that independent and Republican voters should not be forced to fund a partisan government organization? A hundred percent, Chris. And it's not just the FBI anymore. It's all components of our government. It's the FBI, the DOJ, it's the IRS. I mean, they're all uh, coming after their, uh, you know, the, the Democrats' uh, political adversaries. And yeah, this is this is ridiculous. The double standard here. It's ridiculous how the mainstream media and the liberal press, which basically uh, same entity, uh, how they cover this up and they, they minimize this when they were just chomping at the bit to to come after every single thing they could come up with regarding Trump and the documents. But you know, the, the, here's the thing that's concerning, Chris, is that these really aren't uh, these 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 this, this is apples to oranges to some extent. What happened in the Biden case is much worse at this particular point. You know, President Trump left. He was a sitting president, and he left as the president of the United States. He had the authority to have those documents for some time for the purpose of archiving them, so on and so forth. And he had the authority to declassify anything he wanted to. Didn't matter what it was. He could declassify because he was the president of the United States. Joe Biden, when this happened, was the vice president of the United States. He had no more authority to walk out of the White House with any of those documents, regardless of where he kept them, whether he kept them locked up in the uh, secure skiff, uh, the trunk of his Corvette or whatever it was. He had no authority, no ability and no right to keep that stuff any more than I did when I walked out of the White House. Right. And mind you that, you know, yeah. President Trump had all the documents in one location. Right. And, and they knew where they were at. This guy's got documents strewn out all over the place, and he had them for six years. Of those six years, mind you, there were at least two years where he had no Secret Service protection. As a vice president, when he leaves office, he gets Secret Service protection for six months, and then he, it's gone. And then he didn't pick it up again until sometime after he started running for president, probably 18 months before he was elected. So there was a period of about two years there where that was just Joe Citizen's garage. And it was also apparently Hunter Biden's residence. Well, so I, I can't even imagine. I know. This is the part that concerns me. Do you, can you imagine how many how many good drugs and how many, uh, you know, hookers and and, 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 you know, sweet monthly paychecks those documents could have bought if Hunter had those and, and apparently had access to them? So what happened? We know about the 20 or 30 they found. How many were there before they've been, you know, who knows how many have disappeared at this point? And, I, and it's just it, it really disturbs me that Hunter and people of Hunter's caliber well, had access to these documents for that period of time. Sure, sure. And, Congressman, what really bugs me is I don't know what property values are in Delaware. I don't know what rents are these days, but I think I'm pretty safe, you know, being a Texas boy that I am. I'm pretty safe in assuming that $50,000 a month for rent is a little high, perhaps. Right. The Republicans, seeing as how we can't rely on the Internal Revenue Service anymore to be nonpartisan, perhaps the Republicans ought to look into that. Uh, Congressman, following well, the hey, maybe of a maybe new batch get one of these 80, Maybe they'll get one of these 87,000 new IRAs, IRS agents that they want to go look into that. I mean, it's ridiculous. No, th those, those 87,000 IRS agents are for we the people, are for the middle class, mm -hmm. and the Democrats and Mitch McConnell, and frankly, Congressman, 17 of your Republican colleagues in the Senate all voted to sick those people on us. But different story for a different day. It is a disgrace. Uh, following the revelation of a new batch of classified documents found in that uh, new unsecured location, Congressman James Comer called, your colleague, called on the White House to release the visitors' logs from Biden's Delaware home. The White House responding that there are no visitors' logs because it's a private residence. Congressman, as we know, Biden spends a great deal of time in his beach home, so much so taxpayers are footing the bill to build a wall around his home while Democrats refuse to protect America with a wall on our southern border. We don't know who's been visiting Joe Biden at his home or which of our enemies had access to these classified documents illegally stored there. Have you received guarantees from GOP leadership that they will bring needed reforms and accountability so Americans will know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kevin McCarthy, as speaker, has said this is going to be a priority for us. And, you know, we have great people. We have Jim Jordan. 
we have Comer, we have people like this that are that are pushing uh, to get some answers on this stuff. We are going to get some answers on this, and, and and they need to level with the American people and tell us what's going on. I've been saying for a long time, Chris, that I one of the reasons I think that they go away to Delaware all the time in complete seclusion and there's no visitors logs is because there's probably all kinds of medical stuff going on right now too related to the president's cognitive health that we don't know anything about. So I would like to know what the visitors logs look like. From that perspective, which doctors have been coming to Delaware on the weekends and seeing the uh, seeing the president, so on and so forth. But now I want to know which one of Hunter's friends have been there as well, going through the classified documents in the garage. So, yeah, we need to find out what's going on. Yeah, his overseas friends, of which he's been doing several uh, lucrative business deals, as, as we understand them, over in, in Russia and China. I want you to put your medical hat on if we can, because there's growing outrage out there now, Congressman, over the revelation that officials have been overcounting China virus deaths. CNN medical analyst and Washington Post columnist Dr. Lena Wen writing this admission in the Washington Post that one attending physician admitted to her that his hospital alone misclassified uh, China virus patients by as much as 90, that's nine zero, Congressman, 90 percent. What do you make of this? I mean, I've been saying that, Chris, for two and a half years. As soon as it came out, I was saying that, that these numbers are not accurate because there was an incentive that was put in place early on with reimbursement to health care, uh, to uh, the hospitals and whatnot, that, you know, if, if, if they were treating COVID, the reimbursements were higher. So, you know, it didn't matter if you came in and you died, you know, from a motorcycle accident on the, on the interstate. If, if you tested positive for a week or two prior to that accident, or if you tested positive while they were trying to resuscitate you in the hospital for COVID, you were going to get listed as COVID was going to get listed as part of your, if not the reason that you died in some cases, right? So it, it's complete farce. It's, it's what's kept this going for so long. It's what created the hype and, and the fear that they needed to keep the lockdowns and the mask mandates and everything in place. It's what created the justification for spending billions and billions of dollars in COVID relief money, most of which we don't even know where it went. But I can tell you a lot of it went to the mm. people that support the party, lined their pocket. So uh, there, there's been a big incentive with the drug, the drug companies, the incentives that they have for the vaccine, uh, all this stuff. There's so much corruption here, and it's all driven by those numbers being artificially elevated. There's a lot of incentive there. And that is one thing that we are absolutely going to get to uh, to to the uh, facts about when we uh, when we start doing these oversight hearings is what happened with COVID, the origins of COVID, Anthony Fauci, NIH, the way this money was spent, all of that is on the table. We are going to dig into that. And all the money. Congressman, I've only got about a half a minute left, but I want to get your take on this because you and I are both Texans. I know you're not in the Texas legislature, but please, there's a controversy developing in our home state. The Republican Party there won the majority in the Texas legislature. But the top priority for that GOP leadership in the Texas House is to immediately start figuring out ways to give power to Democrats by appointing them chairman of a significant number of key committees so they can kill conservative legislation. As a citizen of Texas, tell me what you think of Texas Republican leadership in the Texas House giving away power to Democrats so those Democrats can kill common sense conservative priorities. Chris, this infuriates me. It really does. And I hate to come after my colleagues in, in the Texas House on the Republican side of the House, but they are what's wrong with the government right now. They have 80 to 90 percent of the people that are out there that are voting them into office do not want the Democrats to control the committees and, and basically tank our agenda and put a stop to the agenda. But that's exactly what's happening. It's shameful. I can't believe it's happening. I hope it gets exposed more and more as each day goes on. And I hope that if people continue to do this, meaning people, the Republicans in the House of Texas, I hope they get voted out. We got to get rid of people like that. That is not what the Republican Party in Texas needs. And that's not what the state of Texas needs. Yeah, I know. Every, sing every single time I tell folks about what's happening here in Texas, they look at me like I, I have three heads. They can't believe Nobody else does that. that this is actually yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Congressman, thank you very much, man.